<laughs> oh, forgive me folks, it's been a long day. Very long day. But regardless, today we're going to make a tarragon chicken casserole. Well, I say it's a tarragon chicken casserole, but it's got lots of other nice things in it as well. I'm going to put some whole grain mustard in there, garlic, onions, it's going to be creamy, some stock. Carrots. On all that lovely stuff. Because it's getting colder, isn't it? You know, so we want that nice comforting warming food. But anyway, we're going to get on with this. But before we do, remember to hit that subscribe button and make sure to allow all notifications. That way, when I upload a new video, you get told about it. And make sure you watch the whole video so you don't miss a step, because that's really important. But let's get on with it. The first thing we need to do is sort out the chicken. Okay, chicken thighs then. Cheap and cheerful, tastes flipping amazing. So what I'm going to do is open these up. We need six thighs for this recipe. Now I'm going to go against the norm here and I'm going to remove the skin. The reason for this is because we're making a casserole, all right, you can brown the skin as much as you like. You can get it nice and crispy, but once we add the stock and the cream and everything else, it's going to go soggy, isn't it? So there's no point having it on. So I'm just going to whip these off. You can buy them skinless as well, but it's easy enough to do yourself. You just put your thumb under there, and just kind of rip it off. So I've got my pan here, make sure that it's hob safe and also oven safe. If you haven't got one that's hob safe, just kind of brown the chicken off in a frying pan and transfer it over. But this is both safe for the hob and the oven. So I'm going to get that onto a medium high heat, touch of oil, and all I'm going to do is just to brown the chicken thighs. You may have to do this in batches and you just want to get a nice golden colour on there. You don't want it black and charred, but that's just going to help develop the flavour. It's called the Maillard reaction and it only needs a couple of minutes each side just to get that nice colour on there. So I'm going to tend to these and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, shut that off, take this chicken out and there we are, look, see there's not much colour on there, but that's just going to boost your casserole, give it all that nice chickeny flavour and just make it extra, extra good. Don't skip this step. And then all that goodness in there, all that chicken fat, the oil, all the kind of caramelised bits on the bottom, don't throw that away. That is kitchen gold. Don't you dare throw it away, because I will find you. I will find you. And I've got a fairly large onion here. Roughly dice it up. Doesn't need to be super fine. This is rustic cooking. And I've got three carrots here, and I'm just gonna dice them up into little roundels like that. Then we get the pan back on to a low heat. And then just use your ham-fisted hands and get it all in that pan. Just a pinch of salt, just a little bit, and just literally sweat those down for about 15 minutes. Just starts the cooking process, gets the onions nice and translucent, a bit soft, helps start cooking the carrots and all that good stuff. Right, so look at all that deliciousness happening in there. Just chuck in the garlic, and like you've seen me do before, we're just going to stir that in for about 30 seconds until the garlic starts to smell fragrant, taking out the rawness of it. Next, we're gonna go in with a good heaped tablespoon of plain flour. And again, we just need to cook out the rawness of that flour. If you've ever had a casserole or a stew that's kind of had a flour thickening and it tastes a bit grainy, a bit chalky and a bit floury, that's because it's not been cooked out. It's really important. And it won't take long, 30 seconds to a minute. Now we're gonna add some vino, white wine. Something that you would drink. What's your problem? Why are you piping up? But you want about 250 to 300 ml. Slosh it in. Doesn't have to be expensive wine, just one that you would drink. And I'm going to turn the heat up just a touch because we want to reduce that wine down by about half. Because we need to take out the alcohol. Because the alcohol is just going to make it taste bitter and not very pleasant. And again, that'll take a couple of minutes. You'll see it bubble away, it'll kind of reduce down, smash in stuff. So you can see after a couple of minutes, look, you've kind of got this gloopy mess. It's absolutely fine. That's the flour doing its job, making it nice and thick. And you can see that the wine has kind of evaporated. It's gone nice and thick. That means the alcohol's kind of burned off. Now I'm going to add the chicken back in. Any juices, get that in as well. A couple of bay leaves, scrunch them up a bit, get them in. And I'm going to top this off with some stock, obviously chicken stock, but you can use veg if you want. Just enough to kind of cover everything. And like I always do, I've got a bit left over just in case I need to top it up. I've got some whole grain mustard, a couple of teaspoons of that. You could use English mustard, Dijon, but don't use that American mustard for burgers and hot dogs. It's just not the same. It's not as good, in my opinion. Okay, no hate in the comments, please. Just a pinch of salt. Just be careful because obviously there's salt in the stock. 
And here we've got some tarragon, dried tarragon. Now this is one of the very few herbs that is okay when it's dried. If you can get fresh, great, but it's not easy to get hold of in the supermarket. So use dried, it's absolutely fine for tarragon. And I'm gonna go in with just a heaped teaspoon to start with. Be careful, because tarragon is a strong herb. Goes really well with chicken, but if you use too much, it's gonna kind of taste like medicine. So a good heaped teaspoon. And you can always adjust at the end, add a bit more if you want to. I'm gonna add some pepper, give it a good old mix up. Then you just stick a lid on it. And that's ready for the oven. And that'll take like 45 minutes, won't take long at all. Just until the chicken's nice and cooked through, the sauce has gone nice and thick. But check it halfway through and add a bit more stock if it needs it. And temperature wise, you're looking at about gas mark five. But I'll put the conversions up on the screen for you because I'm nice like that. But I'm gonna go and put my feet up for a bit. See you in a bit. A few inches later. Right, let's get this thing out. Got some potatoes there, some broccoli that is frankly on the turn, needed using up, so I'm cooking that off as well. But we need to finish this casserole. Get it done, then we can get it in my face. So obviously, I'm gonna check it for seasoning. Doesn't need any salt, plenty in there. Doesn't need any tarragon either, because there's plenty of that as well. Got a small handful of chopped parsley. Get that in there, that's gonna add a bit of freshness. And the piste de resistance, some double cream. I'd say about 150 to 200 ml. Stirry, stirry. I'm just gonna bring it up to temperature, probably reduce the sauce just a little bit, just on the hob. Wait for my broccoli, wait for my spuds to cook, and we can serve it up and eat it. why I buy broccoli because I don't really actually like it that much I just feel like I should have it never mind let's just dive straight in let's give this a taste tarragon chicken mustard cream delicious things it's just gonna work isn't it now if you have any sauce left over don't chuck it away stick it in a tub in the fridge you've got a ready-made fantastic pasta sauce this is what simple home cooking food is about simple delicious hearty Good for you. Good for your body, good for your soul. Make it. But we're gonna wrap this up, because I need to finish this, because I am hungry. But let me know in the comments, what did you think of my tarragon chicken and mustardy, delicious, creamy chicken casserole? And if you enjoyed this video, share it. Put it on Facebook, Twitter, Insta, all that kind of stuff. And if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe, allow all notifications, that way, when I upload a video, YouTube tells you about it. And I guess I'll see your gorgeous faces in the next video. And bye for now. I don't know if you can see this, but look. Look at the state of that broccoli. That's seen better days. I mean, it's just meh, isn't it? It's just meh, broccoli.